Okay, so moving on to part C, which simply asks, are these two memories, x1 and x2, stable? And for this, we're gonna test x1. So if the network is in state x1 and you update the activation state of each neuron, do any of the neurons change their activation? For a memory to be stable in a neural network model, all of the neurons must keep the same activation state as when they were initially shown. So in order to do this, let me just scroll down real quick. We're going to be using the activation dynamics equation, which is the second one written on the page. We'll use yellow for this right here, which essentially means that the activation state of a given neuron, I, is a sine function, we'll get to that in a second, of the weight of a given synaptic connection times the activation state of the second neuron over here. minus a threshold. For purposes of the homework, this theta is zero, so we don't have to worry about it. And the sine function simply means that if it's a value greater than zero, we're gonna get a plus one activation state, and if it's less than zero, we're gonna get a negative one activation state. All right, so let's take a look at x1 over here. Just to write it out again, we have 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. Those are our eight neurons. And just to help, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go, so those are our eight neurons. These are the activation states of each of them. So that would be our A, J term over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply each of these activation states, like in the activation dynamic equation, by the weight of their connection using our weight matrix over here from the previous part. The first neuron, one, one, can't multiply by anything because it can't connect upon itself. We're just going to draw an X. Okay, for 1, 2, we're going to take a look up here. What's the value in 1, 2? It's 0. So we're going to multiply that one by 0. All right, now what's 1, 3? We have the activation state of 3, our AJ term, which is 1. Now what's the weight value? Well, if we go up here, that weight value is two. So we're gonna multiply that by two. One, four, the weight value is zero. So is it four, five? And then one, six, it is two. Seven is zero, and then eight is two. So if we go through, we multiply all of these out. Oh, sorry. This one is a negative 2, which means this is a positive 2, as is this one. Okay, so this is the multiplication values over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add them all up, like that sigma term over here tells us to do. And what we're going to get is a plus 6. Now, with the sine function, like we said, if there's anything greater than 0, we're going to get a plus 1. So a sine of plus six is going to be a plus one value. Now if we compare that to our original value in x1 over here, which is a plus one, then we get a plus one over here as well, 
it's stable for neuron 1. Because the activation state of neuron 1 did not change when we updated it. So now we're going to go through and do the same for each of the neurons in the network. And then I just real quickly did the one for neuron 2, which you can see is also stable. And if we keep going on and on down this path, we're going to eventually find out that each one of the, ne the neurons in this network is stable and that they didn't change from the original activation states. So if we go through for neuron 3, it's going to be a sign of plus 6, which is plus 1. For 4, it's going to be a sign of negative 6, which is negative 1. 5, sine plus 6, which is plus 1. 6, it's going to be a sign negative 6, which is negative 1. 7, which is a sine plus 6 which is plus 1, and then 8, which is a sine, negative 6, which is negative 1. And again, if we look back at our original, x1, also written down over here, each one of these values matches up to their original. So we've proved that this is a stable network. Now we're going to go on to part D. Okay, part D is pattern completion. The prompt states, X3 and X4 are slightly modified versions of one of the two memories. Neither one is stable. Start your network in state X3 and update the neurons and show what state you end up in and then do the same as X4. So if we remember again, X3, the matrix for that looks like... And X4 looks like Now as the prompt state states, these memories are slightly modified versions of our previous two memories, X1 and X2. If we look closely, we see that X3 up here is slightly different than X1, and X4 is slightly different than X2. For these two, X3 has a changed second neuron than X1, and X4 has a changed first neuron than X2. So knowing this, we can go back down, second, first. And we're essentially going to be doing the same calculation that we did in the previous section, part C. So it's that same activation function. The activation is a sign of the cumulative weight connection, activation state minus a threshold which is zero. But in this, but at this time, we only care about the neurons that have been changed. So starting with X3, we care about this second neuron right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the activation states of X3, just write them out, but not 2 because 2 cannot connect back upon itself. So this is the A, J sequence over here. We're just kind of doing it all at once instead of one by one times. 
our weights from our weight matrix back up here. So in this sense, it's very much like what we just did in part C. So up here, this first one is zero, like up there, zero. Three is also zero. Smash this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one is two, minus two, zero, minus two, zero. Which equals zero, nothing. 0, negative 2, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0, which is negative 6. And the sign negative 6 is negative 1. Now if we look over at x3, we see that neuron 2 is a plus 1. But negative 1 is what its original state was in x1. So the neuron flipped back to its original state. And since we showed in part c that the network is stable, this makes sense, that it should revert back to its original negative 1 state. And now we just do the same thing for x4, also looking at this changed neuron, the first one. You can do it right below here, so just writing it all out. I like to keep track of my neurons as well. So these are activation states over here. And then we multiply them. By the weight values in the weight matrix up here. So for us, this means that it's 0 plus 2, 0, 0, minus 2, 0, minus 2, and if we multiply all of those, we get a sign of plus 6 function, which is a plus 1, which compared to x4 and our original state and x2, it flipped back to its original state. And again, we showed in part c that the network was stable, so the flip neuron reverted back to its original state. And that is the end of the homework. Congratulations.